Hi, welcome to Fiber Town, episode 147. Um, it's March 30th. It's about lunchtime in my kitchen today. My name is Emily, Chain of Fools on Ravelry, Fiber Town with an RE on Instagram. I thought my little girl Alice could join us today at the kitchen table, but it's the visual's too weird with her. She's not very big with her sat on the chair. So I'll just hold her for a wee while. She's just come in from sunning herself outside. And she's working on her belly tan, which she gets every year. <laughs> Looks like she's going to need a nap very soon. Um, and probably me too. I have been um, quite sick for about 10 days. And finally um, bit the bullet, went to the doctor, which I don't like to do generally because if you're sick, you go to the doctor, they tell you it's a virus, drink fluids, and it's three hours later and you're $20 poorer at least. So... Uh, I finally did go because I felt as if um, I had been hit by a bus and I had strep throat and um, strangely, <coughs> um, not strangely, I guess the doctor said to expect this, that the medicine won't make you feel better right away and that has been the case for me. So yeah, but there's too much to talk about to skip a week. So mm, a little love, my little darling. So Alice and I thought we would... Um, just sit for a while and tell you all the things we've been up to. Um, so we have some housekeeping bits. I have an FO to show you. I have works in progress, imagining, I'll put you down, spinning, acquisitions, and I don't have a good name for this segment, but Fiber Town out and about, maybe? Are you comfy like that? Oh my gosh. Probably cannot see. Yeah, there you go. Those are her back legs, froggy style, on my leg. All right, well, did I say who I am? Emily, yeah, yeah, I think I did. Um, Emily is now looking for her coffee. Oh my gosh, this is not good. Seriously, did I put yarn on my coffee? Oh, there it is, okay. <coughs> Apologize for the coughing, I will, I'll see how it goes. I might have to edit it out. Did you guys see the little video I put up about um, my little fiber farmer's market outing? I hope you liked it. I tried editing. It was all right. I don't love it, but, you know, I'll get better at it, hopefully. Okay, so two things I want to mention to you. Um, let's see. Actually, these were requests from viewers. I'm more than happy to help them out. So the first one is from Tesoro Knits. Tesoro, I'm sorry, Tesoro Stitchery. And that is Anita. She's from Maryland. And she has put a thread in the Fiber Town Ravelry group, which is Fiber, Fiber Space Town Podcast. Had to check. Um, and she has been trying for quite a while to get into some of the Maryland Sheep and Wool spinning workshops and has not been able to do that. So for whatever reason, she they're sold out when she gets there. And she figured a lot of other people might have the same experience. So she has located <clears throat> a Maryland teacher, Patsy Zawatowski, a spinning teacher, and has put her bio on this thread and so forth. And she has booked her services um, for a couple hours, Friday morning, right before Maryland, Maryland Sheep and Wool, to do... Um, basically a spinning workshop, advancing your skills, etc., etc. And she has all the details on the thread, so please, it could be a really good thing to do, and then you could meet um, folks to hang out with at Maryland. And um, yeah, that sounds great. So go ahead and check out her thread on the podcast group. Now the other one is a request from Life Full of Laugh. I've mentioned her before. She has... Um, Facebook and a Ravelry group for sock yarn swapping and basically she wanted me to reiterate that she's doing this <coughs> uh, she's doing swapless swaps um, which is you don't have to send anything to anybody which is you know can be appealing if you don't like to put packages together and go to the post office yada 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 but basically she is when she gets a commitment from so many people she places big orders at uh, with a lot of independent dyers um, for sort of hard to get indie yarns and 
she, I think she is the one, I could be wrong. Oh yeah, she creates mini skeins from the big skeins, either in five or 10 gram weights and sends them to people, sends them to the, the swappers. When it's not really a swap. You just get cool yarn. So um, check out her, I'm sorry, ugh, check out her, um, her group. It's Sock Yarn Swappers on Ravelry. Um, yeah. Anyway, and there's a master list of swaps. Wow, that'd be cool too. So that is from Life Full of Laugh. If you're, if you can't find that group, just look at her, um, her Ravelry profile, Life Full of Laugh. And I'm sure she has details there. <clears throat> okay, so our little knit along this week, this month rather, is... This is so weird. I feel like I should have a co-host that's visible. She's actually asleep down here. Um, anyway, <clears throat> the new along is on for one more day. It's March 30th. So it's been very fun to see what you guys have made. New crafts to you, new techniques, new colors, new yarns. Um, there have been a few things in there that I've really kind of had to put on my list. So go take a look. The April word <clears throat> is nature. So it would be a nature along. Um, because things, you know that beautiful spring green? It's really, like, I don't know. My eye just loves it. It's um, the, the color of new leaves. It's somewhere between a leaf and a chartreuse. And it's just beautiful. So we've got a lot of that here. Um, my clematis, 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 I've heard it said both ways. I really, literally could watch that plant grow. It grows inches in a day um, this time of year. Actually, I have a couple of them, but one in particular, the flowers in the spring, it blooms twice a year. The flowers in the spring are plate sized. They're amazing purple flowers. So that is going bonkers. I have goldfinches at my feeder, eating thistle seeds. So yeah, <coughs> the word of the month will be nature. So um, the prize for this month, um, it's going to kind of be dual. This is a beautiful bag made by Intuit Knits, who has a really lovely podcast on YouTube. You should check it out. Um, just a great little bag. And I am going to be donating, along with that, <clears throat> some yarn that sort of reminds me of this time of year, nature-wise. Now, this is from Stash. This is from my daughter's Stash. I say that with a smile. This is, um, isn't that pretty? Doesn't that remind you of spring? This is the most excellent Dale Garn, Dale of Norway, otherwise known. <clears throat> and this is the Hawk base. I believe it's a sport weight. So it's pure wool, uh, made in Norway. Each ball is um, 100 meters, 109 yards. So it's for you know what, it may be a sport or a DK. I haven't looked it up. Um, two of the yellows are missing their ball bands, but they seem to be pretty intact skeins. So I just thought that would make for an awesome color work something. So that will be the prize for March going into April for the nature along. So start thinking about how you're going to, you know, interpret that theme, that word for April. Um, yeah, and get your new along things in because you have one more day. All right. Um, so yes, my daughter had a stash and we have, we've done spring cleaning on her room and she did knit for a while. She was, she, she knits well for a while. She was quite into it and you know, now she's not. And I'm, I, I, fingers crossed it'll come back someday. Um, she's doing other things right now. Other creative things too, which is lovely. So that is it for the housekeeping stuff. Let's get on to FOs. FO. Um, let me just tell you what I'm wearing first because it all kind of ties in. This is my daughter's. This is, can you see? It's a necklace. I gave her this for Easter. It is um, grilled cheese and tomato soup. Sucra Sucra Miniatures also makes jewelry couldn't resist. It's her favorite meal, so I decided I'd wear it. They also have pizza slice on a ring, which I kind of need. Yeah, maybe next order. I'm wearing an old hobbledehoy handspun 
cowl where I just cast on a million stitches out of this gorgeous hand spun. It's got gold sparkle and sari silk, um, some neppy things in there. Ugh, it's so squishy. I just did garter stitch and I love a cowl that, you know, can do a double fold. I'm going to take this off so I can show you my FO. Um, I'm also wearing the Old Town by Carol Sunday, which is knit out of Blue Moon BFL. This is um, a contiguous sleeve construction, which was a lot of fun. It needs a good gleaning with the, the gleaner depiller, but I've, I've worn this, wore this sweater all up through spring break. It's just a wonderful sweater. All right, so this is my sewn FO, <laughs> and it is my, my um, muslin for the Alabama Channon tunic that I'm going to make. Now, this is really long. I'm going to make it shorter when I use my Alabama Channon jersey. And, uh, but it was, it, it's just super simple. I had some very inexpensive jersey. I did not do, um, this was just for sizing. I didn't do the armhole and um, collar bindings at all. Um, I did sort of a, what do they call this? probably can't see it, but I did a decorative. I did this on the machine. Sort of a little leaf going down this seam right here. Um, yes, I will do the, the other one by hand. I'll sew it by hand. <clears throat> and one of my acquisitions this week was the soft thimble, the nimble. It's basically a leather. Is it leather? doesn't say. I think it's a leather thimble though because I'm going to be doing all of that tunic sewing by hand. So I love this thing. It's super comfy. You know, I don't know. It's not organic jersey. It's very lightweight flimsy jersey. Um, <clears throat> I think I paid three dollars a yard for it. You could totally do this with a, you know, reuse t-shirts. Um, it's basically very thin t-shirt material. So <coughs> You know, my, my take on it is, yeah, I don't know, like, where or how this fabric was made, but at least I've cut out, I'm the one doing the sweat shopping on it, basically, not child labor somewhere. <laughs> so, you know, I don't know the provenance of the fabric, but at least I've cut out a step where things could have gone wrong in the, the making of this top. So, yeah, it's, um, still deciding whether or not I'm going to do stenciling on the other one. We'll see. Probably not. <clears throat> so, works in progress. All right. Let me show you my blanket. Okay. This thing is getting big. Gorgeous and big. Big and gorgeous. Put a couple of squares on this. Um, several were for, from, um, were gifted, were gifts from a meetup that I did this week. Let me show you this one first. This was hand spun by my fiber campers that I applied, and I put a little silver spun on top because I did not have enough to finish the square. Um, it's got my lolly stitch marker. Now the other one is, <coughs> oh, the other two are from I got to meet I got to meet up with Jenny of Tiny Paper Foxes. That was lovely. And she gave me a few minis. This one is Gregoria Fibers. It's a, a alpaca silk blend, I believe. And it was um Gregoria Fibers. Um, she uses natural dyes. And this was with Kutch, which I believe is a type of tree bark. Could be wrong, could be totally making that up. I've been known to do that. This is my newest stitch marker. I'm kind of in love. Look. A little peep. If you are not a person who's been lucky enough to grow up with peeps, and I say that with a grain of salt, they're disgusting. Um, I know, I know that's a controversial thing to say. I'm not a fan of eating peeps, but I do think they're adorable. And I do love the Washington Post Peeps Diorama contest every Easter. Check it out online if you haven't before. There's a Shackleton peeps diorama this year and my friend Mary Lee Harris Mary Lee Harris art has entered before and she's done amazing things so basically you do a diorama something something of the cultural zeitgeist or 
um, history or art inspired anything really and you do a diorama made with peeps and I think generally people buy I did not plan to talk about this but here we go I think generally people buy peeps and save them through the year and they kind of harden peeps are marshmallows in the form of rabbits or um, chicks there might be other shapes too um, and they're marshmallow dipped in colored sugar so yeah um, no but you can dress them up when they are old and hardened and you can set them in displays so yes there's a Shackleton there's a shack um, like the Endeavor and the crew and there's some penguins <laughs> and all the crew members are peeps anyway <clears throat> so where was I go oh yeah the peep marker and then this is Cornish tin also from Jenny uh, that's my craft mac and cheese so yay lovely fun I always like picking this blanket up and working on it I think I have about 320 squares at this point <coughs> and that's a good little more than third of the way let's just say a thousand squares I think it'll be done at a thousand I've been working on it for almost a year and a half so let's say five six year project maybe unless I get inspired to just work monogamously on it probably not gonna happen definitely not gonna happen okay uh, I wanted to show you just very briefly I've mentioned this design <clears throat> a couple of times and I'm just gonna show you it balled up <laughs> it's in um, the really beautiful bird bag sent to me by um, Christine house yarn in a swap we did so this is this is the design. I I still am not confident that I'm gonna publish it. But just in case, this is the wrong side. It is a garter stitch stole shawl scarf. Um, it does have some design elements, and this is Kira yarn from Miss Babs. And I have got to say, I adore working with Kira. It comes, it's a, I think 500 and uh, I'm going to tell you exactly, hang on. It's one of her newer bases. K-E-I-R-A. I want more of this. <clears throat> Kira by Miss Babs. It's a fingering merino. It's a dense fingering, quite heavy. So 8.2 ounces, 8.29 ounces, 560 yards. Um, and they describe it as a heavy fingering weight that works up into a dense plush fabric with superb stitch definition and very little halo. All true. We love its neat and tidy four ply construction and smooth hand. It's lovely to knit with. I'm really enjoying it. This is the Rishi colorway. Ugh, man, I'm looking rough today. <laughs> Today I kind of wish it were an audio podcast because just like even with makeup, mm. um, but then my voice. Anyway, this is free. <laughs> um, you know, it's not going to be. Oh god, why do we even talk sometimes? Okay, I'm just going to keep talking about the knitting. Um, yeah. Love, love, love working with the yarn. This could be a reason to stand at line at, at the Miss Babs booth in Maryland. Maybe. So yeah, great stuff. And I put this, I did a lot of knitting on it when we were out of town for spring break. I'll talk more about that later. I think this is going to be a longer episode than I anticipated. Would you guys like to say hello to Alice again? Hey, Al. Al. There's my honey. How you doing, kiddo? You went outside and spent some time out there in the sunshine? She's a lovely girl. She has finally gotten to the point where she does not freak out when we go away. She stays with my parents, and apparently it was just seamless this time. She doesn't go on a hunger strike anymore. She doesn't wait at the back door. Um, she just enjoys herself. She enjoys getting spoiled. They feed you cheese, don't they? Yeah. 
Okay, so... Okay, I have some other things to show you. Works in progress. I have... I have gotten the cast on bug, cast on itis. So, I've been working on two that you've already seen. The Agatha Socks by Claire McAvoy, New Hampshire Knits, um, who is just freshly returned from the Edinburgh Yarn Festival. Very exciting. I have one done, Sun, and this is out of the Silver Spun Yarn. Um, I'll tell you more about the Silver Spun as we go along, um, as I finish the next one. This has got amazing, this yarn is amazing. It's tweedy because of the silver content. Look at the pattern from the Agatha socks. Isn't that wonderful? Now I've just done my curmudgeonly, <coughs> I've stuck to my heel. I think Claire does this really cool heel in her pattern. I was just on autopilot and I just did my heel. Um, but love, love her heel, um, the way it looks in the pattern. And the stitches, the, the definition of the stitches is really beautiful. And it's so hard to get a good representation of this color. No. It's a little better. A little better. Um, snug. These are super snug. They're very densely knit. Um, you know, my pattern stitches are a lot uh, looser gauge than my stockinette. So hopefully the heel, or the, the bottom of the foot, I tend to wear through my socks on the sides, particularly on the, the side where the big ball of, the big, the ball of my foot below my big toe. So yeah, these are nice and dense. I hope they wear well. Uh, the second one is coming along. I'm halfway through the second repeat. Um, once I finish that, I will do the heel. They fly once you get going. Really fun knit. And the yarn, you know, I was, I would say if you want to knit with this yarn, go ahead. I have, I'm enjoying the final product. You might want to swatch with it. Just, you know, <laughs> I cannot, I cannot condone swatching. <laughs> no. Um, but generally, I don't. But this might be, you know, this yarn is super different from the stuff I normally knit with. And a swatching session just to get the feel of the yarn would have been a good idea. You know, luckily I was able to get a wearable object out of my first go around with it. <clears throat> but, you know, I would recommend a swatch. Silver Spun from the Feel Good Yarn Company. This was donated to the podcast to me to try out uh, by Stitchcraft Marketing. And uh, I'm excited to wear them and see how they wear. And I will definitely report back. I believe this yarn was developed in um, one of the universities in North Carolina. So it's kind of fun to support that kind of um, uh, fiber innovation, especially one happening in the U.S. All right, so the last, is that the last? No, it's not the last work in progress. But I've done a little bit on my Threshold Sweater by Melanie Berg. Um, <clears throat> this is out of Hazelnut's Artisan Sock. Again, not capturing. This is so much more muted in real life. It's just, my, my lighting is just blowing up the colors. They're much they're making it much more saturated than they really are. <coughs> Excuse me. Not to say that this is not saturated, but, um, sorry. My phone is blowing up. I'm knitting these again on um, Marbles Needles, which I adore. I think these are a size 5. Yeah, size 5. Love knitting with them. They've got these really beautiful acrylic needles. I knit the ribbing up here on a size 4. Now I'm on size 5 for the body. And it's this twisted stitch cable with pattern, with texture in between. It's really hard to see, but yeah, I'm very excited. I think this, if I go to Rhinebeck, knock on wood, this will be one of my sweaters. It is a fingering weight. There we go, hazelnuts, big wheel in the quill colorway. Let's see what it looks like if my camera does bad things to the collar. Yeah, it's still the same thing. It's also making my hair look really weird. Because my hair does not look weird in real life. Yeah, it does. Uh, 
Eh. That's, no, no, that's not even it either. Anyway, it's a much more of a denim look in real life, I guess I would say. All right, last work in progress <clears throat> is somewhere here. Um, I have it in the bag that Intuit Knits made for me because it matches, look. How cute is that? This is my, hang on. That's my walkies bag. Oh, she's really out. It's my walkies bag. Yeah. She knows I'm not, I'm just fooling around. So these are <coughs> two, um, my latest hand spun from the Holland Handmaids Club. No, Highland Handmaids. <laughs> Very different. So I have one traditional, ball, traditional three ply and one chain ply. So I originally thought that I was going to um, stripe both of these into each sock. But I have decided not to do that. And I am instead going to do a sort of an experiment <clears throat> with the different constructions and see which one wears, um, wears better. The traditional three-ply or the chain-ply. And I'm knitting on a heel flap right now. Um, now, I am not the one, the first one, to think about this kind of um, experiment. Uh, what was it? It was one of the spinning books. I think it was a Sarah Anderson one. Um, I could be wrong. But I think she is the one who, who did this sort of experiment and found actually that the chain ply lasts longer. Or wears better in terms of socks getting holes. So yeah, I've started the first one. I'm on the heel flap. There it is. Again, this is not an accurate color. I don't know what's going on today. Um, so traditional three ply. It's got a nice heathery marled look. Dyed by a heather of Highland Handmaids. I'm really loving her sock, her sock, her fiber club so far. I'm very excited. I think the next one is due very soon, maybe in the next week. Um, so once I get to the gusset, I will do a few rounds of blue, but I think I have a lot of blue in here. So I might cut it and then start getting to the pink. I don't know. I'll, 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 maybe I'll weigh it. So this is, um, each one of these is about 150 yards and they're sport, mostly sport weight. There are some thicker and thinner spots. It's hand spun. Um, but it's, it's, it's a lovely fabric and it's cheviot. Um, the wool is cheviot or cheviot. I think it's, you'll hear it, cheviot in the UK. Uh oh shoot just well some wool just rolled away from me um, I wanted to because I promised that I would verify whether or not I was correct about Cheviot being a down breed so just let me find what Deborah Ibsen and Carol Acariot say about it and I you know I had this in my head from taking a class with Deb last Shenandoah Valley Fiber Festival here we go the Cheviot family or Cheviot Aren't they lovely? They're clean-faced sheep, no wool on their faces. So she says, although cheviots aren't among the core down breeds, their wool falls into the same general range, though it's usually longer and just a bit stiffer than the characteristic down springiness. While you may be able to fel produce felt with cheviot wools, look to other breeds for quick, reliable felting results. So that's one of the reasons um, that down well that this wool is really great for socks like other down breeds um, and she calls it a friendly wool somewhere in that description and it is a friendly wool it's just so nice um, it's totally accurate to call it a friend friendly wool in my opinion um, going very fast 48 stitches <laughs> 48 stitches on size US size twos which are 2.75 <coughs> millimeters um, I'm loving it and I love that it matches my bag all right so that is it for works in progress <clears throat> let me just talk though about something really quickly since we're talking about hand spun um, I was looking at my shelf of hand spun yarns the other day and I was just inspired to take a picture of it because it was looking particularly beautiful 
and I took a picture and posted it on Instagram. <coughs> Excuse me. You may or may not have seen it. <clears throat> Here it is. It's that shelf in the middle. And I would love to see pictures of your hand spun shelf or box or bin or basket. Please show me hand spun shelf. Um, share it on Instagram. Share it in the, um, the episode thread on the group. Yeah. So you can see there's the wool I'm currently knitting. It's since come off of the hand spun shelf. All right. So we are off to imagine knitting. And I have to credit, um, excuse me. Oh, I got my wool back. I have to credit um, Vicki from Heartland Knits for at least teaching me that term. So I have two things that I'm imagining right now, probably more, but two things that I want to show you and talk to you about. The first one is has to do with um, the Fiber West. We put up a poll and um, put up several patterns that we're considering, oh, that Sarah was considering knitting. Sarah is Flonis, my friend who's been doing monthly podcasts with me. Um, I'm assembling my wool. And the one with the most votes was the Exploration Station. Um, it's long been on our radar. Yeah, and I'm going to knit one. And I just looked <coughs> at that hand spun shelf. I'm sorry about the coughing. I'm sorry about the foggy headedness. I'm sorry about the camera like dipping down to see my dog. Sorry. Most of the time when I, one reason I don't edit is that I watch myself and I go, you are such a dork. But I don't really care. <laughs> but I don't always want to see it constantly and be reminded of it. But sometimes I just, I say something and I'm like, you are such a dork. If you see me making a weird face as I podcast, it's that I'm thinking that I am such a dork face. All right. Exploration Station by Stephen West <coughs> out of my hand spun shelf. I'm going to call this my farm, my farmyard orphans. And I have, I'm sorry, that was my partner in crime texting me. Look at my farmyard orphans. Look at them all. This is going to become an exploration station. So this is random yardage of tons of sheep breeds. Let me just show you what I have. I can't wait. So it's not going to be the traditional Stephen West pow Edison bulb, neon peach, but it's going to be full of wonderfulness. Um, <clears throat> so I do believe I will start with my fin sheep. This. I did a, um, a breed-specific color affection several years ago. I did Finn, Romney, and Jacob. Dark, um, dark brown Jacob. And <clears throat> this is really lovely Finn wool. So that will be the beginning. <coughs> um, we also have... Gosh, what's that? Oh, this is Hog Island. Hog Island will go in there. One of the most romantic breeds out there. Some Tunis from Ross Farm. I think I'll use this brown Jacob as as transitions and if I need more gosh you really can't see this wool at all if I need more that of uh, this kind of color then I will spin some of my Corydale Rambouillet blend Clun Forest a down breed from Joanna Spring her Etsy store I put that in some some of these have been in weaving projects <clears throat> these are leftovers <coughs> excuse me a bat from Kimberly at Teasel. I think this has BFL alpaca and so forth in it. This is um, Ross Farm Cotswold lamb that she gave to me a while back. I spun it and it's gorgeous. Some yogurt, random amount of yogurt um, that has not been dyed gray. Blinding white. And this is from a Swensty from the 2015 Flat Island Eclipse. Beautiful gray is that. <clears throat> I need something, a beverage here. All of those, <clears throat> and possibly some more, will be an exploration station, and that's going to get cast on soon-ish. 
maybe tonight, who knows? Because I know how to live it up, basically, people. All right, the, um, the next one, <clears throat> I am looking for the pattern. This is one I have been seeing, it's a knitty pattern. It's one I've been seeing, I'll show you the little bobbins version of it. Now, it's the Geek Socks from, it's from Nitty. I don't recall the designer name, because I haven't actually looked it up. There we go, there's little bobbins. So, I'm thinking of using my naturally dyed wool from Teasel and making little mitts, basically. Um, there's not a lot of yardage of these, but it's worsted weight. It's from Abundant Earth, which is um, a Washington State wool producer. And Kimberly is an amazing dyer. Look at, you know, I've shown you these before. Oops. Okay, that one went too far away for me to get. But picture these with a coral as well. Put them back in here. Um, yeah, little mitts with that sort of pattern. It's really not too easily seen, but look up Geek Socks and you'll get the idea. I keep them in this, this um... Oh, this was a, <laughs> this was an award given to my husband. He's like, you have the bowl, I don't like it. So I put cute things in it. Um, yeah, that's it for imagining that has coalesced enough in my brain to warrant an explanation to you all. There's more, but for now that's it. For spinning, I've been doing more Shetland prep. I have been, <clears throat> I got out some Lincoln long wool locks and combed a little nest. Such, such a long staple and you get this you know, very few locks make this incredible, incredibly long nest. That's all one continuous um, combed top. I've also been spinning hobbledehoy. This has been on my wheel. I'm almost done with the first half of her magical realism battlings. I've also been spinning, um, well, I, as we were out of town, I took more hobbledehoy with me. It's just perfect. Take a couple of battlings to work on. <clears throat> and I have goodness, my Spanish peacock bead whirl. And um, yeah, let me get this undone. Love me, supported spindling, you all know that. Um, and I just sat on the Adirondack chairs. Oh, hang on, I know what's going on. Sat on the Adirondack chair um, by our hotel room outside in the sunshine with ponies trotting around across the way in their little corral, and uh, yeah, this is great stuff. This is something I bought last year at Maryland Shape and Wool. Mythology Batlings, I believe they're called. Yep, merino, bamboo, navy, sparkle, and milk silk. I did, oh I know, I think I spun these in Spain. I need to ball that up. Some little bits and bobs from <laughs> Looks like they were just pushed off a spindle and put back in the bag. Um, I don't see them. Oh, there's some navy sparkle. Can we capture it? Ah, all right, there it is. Right there. Very beautiful because it's hobbly hoy. So, um, lots of fun to spin. Great for just taking it with you. Oh, there's the other one I took with me. So I did a lot of knitting. Um, that's it for spinning for now. So acquisitions and out and about. We should just call it out and about. I've been watching a lot of Canadian podcasters. I know that's exaggerated. I'm sorry, Canadian podcasters. <coughs> I like Canada. I like Canadians. I grew up near Canada. All right. So I mentioned that I met up with Jenny. And her mom, Linda, who, they're both lovely. I had met Jenny once before at Rhinebeck. And we went to Finch Sewing Studio in Leesburg. And I showed you the thimble I picked up there. I also got these twin protectors. Look. They're socks. Sock shape point protectors. 
And Jenny said, those would be good for a swap. And I was like, sold. Just kind of an enabler. I also got at Finch um, another charm pack. Very cute little fabrics here. Let me show you this way. I love these things. This is the Flow line by Bridget Heitland. Present Chic for Moda. There's so many fours, fours, fours. It's this person for that line, for this brand. It's long-winded in fabric world. Uh, then we went to Two Rivers Yarn Shop. She's a lovely lady, and they have really nice stuff. And I got me <coughs> Meadowcroft Dye Works Yarn Rehab. And these, um, this is a mini Silk Traveler in Grandma's Hollyhocks. This is a father-son operation, this dye operation. And they have lovely, lovely stuff. So I got one of these for my blanket. Then I got a few stitch markers. Yeah, that's a sorcerer's hat. Mm-hmm. Let me just take it out. It's not a progress keeper. It is a stitch marker. Kind of wish it were a progress keeper. Anyway, these are from Porter Farms. They can be a charm or a stitch marker. There we are. She had a lot of these. These were a lot of fun. I think this is <clears throat> from um, a place in Maine. And then I got one other from McPorter Farms. And that is, again, a stitch marker. I cannot open Ziploc bags today. It's a yarn ball with some needles. Yep, good stuff. Um, I got one other thing there. I got this. This is Queensland Collection. Um, Rustic Tweed. I'm laughing because the label says, hang on. Rustic, 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 all around you. <laughs> Seriously, we know is rustic. It's not even that rustic, people. My farm yarns are rustic. Anyway, I got this for heels and toes and cuffs for socks. Um, alpaca, wool, acrylic, and viscose. And it's really nice. And it's not rustic. Anyway. That was it for acquisitions. Let me talk to you about the farm visit. I'm going to use my phone to go through the photos so I can remember everything. <clears throat> so my family went to Chinkteague and Assateague, which my eight-year-old loves to say. Because it's sanctioned, you know, it's a real word with a bad word in it. So Assateague um, is, or you may have heard of Misty of Chinkateague. That was written in, I believe, in the 30s, 40s, or 50s. And basically, uh, it's a story of a pony who is a descendant of a Spanish um, shipwrecked, a bunch of sh shipwrecked Spanish horses that swam to shore um, on Assateague Island. Now, the ponies live on Assateague <laughs> for the most part, which is an island right that abuts Chingu, you know. They're connected by a very, a very short bridge. I guess you couldn't publish, you know, a book called Misty of Assateague, so they put Chinkateague. Every July, end of July, <clears throat> they corral all the wild ponies that live on the wildlife preserve in Assateague. They have them swim the very, um, you know, the narrows that the water, which is, it's, I don't know if you call it an inlet of the Atlantic. I mean, it's the Atlantic Ocean. There are parts of it that are bay as well, but um, it's in the Chesapeake Bay region. It's on the eastern shore of Virginia. So we basically have to drive up to Maryland across the Chesapeake Bay Bridge in Annapolis where we lived for three years and we love Annapolis um, and it, the, the Bay Bridge is like a four plus mile bridge it's serious stuff and then we drive another basically two and a half hours to Chincoteague so really remote re really rural although there's a fair amount of tourism especially in the summer in Chincoteague so I found a deal you know buy two nights, get one free. So we had a really nice stay. Um, anyway, I was, you know, I was saying that they, they drive the ponies across the narrows, they swim across, and then they herd them to um, sort of a, <coughs> a holding area where they, I guess they, um, you know, I'm not the expert on this, but 
I think they do auction off some of the ponies and they may brand them if they belong to a certain farm or operation. And uh, some of them, you know, the ones that are auctioned off are, are broken, you know, for riding and so forth. Um, but yeah, we, we biked all through the refuge. We did about 10 miles um, on, and I can't believe I did this while I had strep throat. I just <laughs> was not gonna let anything get in the way of our family vacation time. So yeah, you can see ponies out in the marshes, basically. They live in the marshes and there are some areas, <clears throat> you know, it abuts the Atlantic Ocean. We also went on the beach. Um, we saw, and just, I love going places where there are a lot of wildlife um, that you can see in its natural habitat. Um, you know, sea lions in California come to mind. Um, you know, when we went to Florida and went to see the manatees every day. I do believe that the manatee is my spirit animal. Pretty sure it is. I love manatees. But I digress. Shocker. Uh, so, I knew we were going to Chincoteague. Um, and there were a lot of wild birds there as well. And one day we had a thunderstorm and dozens and dozens of tiny turtles, tiny little turtles came out and they were just so cute. Here's one. You can see it on Instagram. I'm Fibertown on Instagram, Fibertown with an R-E. They're just adorable. And so I knew from a podcast I listened to, it is called the, <clears throat> I want to make sure I get it right, the Heritage Breed Podcast. Let me double check. Heritage Breeds, which is done by the Livestock Conservancy. They talked a few episodes ago about a farm, or they interviewed one of the farmers, Natalie, um, about their farm, which is about, it was about 25 miles from Chincoteague. So I got in touch with them through their website. It's called Perennial Roots, perennialroots.com, I believe. And I was really fascinated because they've just started raising Gulf Coast native sheep, I guess within the past year. Okay, my camera did something weird. Um, so that has been on my list to try. Here is one of the Gulf Coast natives. Um, here are the lambs. They're precious. They and again, they, you know, it's going back to breeds that um, came from basically, you know, early Spanish settlers. This sheep, this breed of sheep, is one of those. Um, I think Gulf Coast, they're talking Alabama, Georgia, Florida area of the Atlantic coast of those states. Um, as you know, the Spanish colonized Florida originally. So, <clears throat> and probably parts of the Carolinas and Georgia, I don't know for sure. But this breed of sheep has become a really well adapted to muggy, hot environments. And man, <laughs> Virginia has that for sure. So they do well in that environment, and Perennial Roots, it's a biodynamic farm. You can read all about them on their website. They do cool stuff. They basically started out as homesteaders wanting to grow enough food for themselves, started with chicken, chickens, which seem to be the gateway to, gateway, gateway animal. And yeah, now they have sheep. They have two kinds of pigs. They have um, cotton patch geese, which is another endangered southern specific um, animal which used to weed cotton patches in the south and I guess in the last 50 years they've become pretty rare. Um, turkeys, ducks, chickens and I think my favorite animals were the pigs. This is Stuart, he's the farmer, one of the farmers and there, there he is, you can see this better on Instagram, there he is with Kate the sweetest pig ever. She's a cooney cooney. <laughs> so let me tell you about, <laughs> we went down intending to buy a ham from the, the American mule foot hog, which again is another descendant of a Spanish breed. And my husband is Spanish. We're all about the Spanish ham. Um, and they are very wily little 
little pigs. Um, very smart. They're again, they're adapted to that area because their hoof is not cloven. It's again like a horse, mule foot. That's why they call they're called mule foot, and that helps them avoid you know a lot of foot problems that you get in marshy wet areas. Um, we did buy a ham from them, and we made it as soon as we came back. And I'm so glad we did. It was delicious. They also sell bacon and scrapple and uh, other cuts of the pig. And I think in the future they're going to do mail order of their meats. So that was lovely. But as we were looking at the American mule foots, um, and I would, I would urge you to listen to the Heritage Breeds podcast with them because they tell some funny stories about specific animals. I said, okay, that's those are mule foots. What is that? <laughs> it was this enormous pig, and he was just like a big log laying down in the mud, and he had ears like this. And Stuart said, oh, that's a cooney cooney. Cooney coonies. I think they might be my new favorite things. <laughs> oh, my goodness. They, let me see if I have some more photos. They are a New Zealand breed. He said they were adapted by the Maori tribe. And basically, Kuni Kuni means it's K-U-N-E, K-U-N-E. Kuni Kuni basically means like fat and fat, <laughs> chubby and fat, or <laughs> chubby and low to the ground. All right, I'm going to zoom in on Kate. Oh my gosh, she was so, so friendly and personable and just ugly as I'll get out in a cute way. She's ugly cute. Um, the boar could not have cared less. There he is. There's Stuart standing next to him. He just was like, I'm having a nap. You can look at me in all my majesty, but don't expect me to do anything else. This is one of Kate's babies. Spotted. Not showing up well at all. Uh, they were adorable. They were so friendly. They were all eating beets and turnips for the garden, from the garden. Anyway, it was a delightful, um, a delightful trip. Really um, a treat to go there. <clears throat> and I'm just realizing I should have Maybe I'll go ahead and insert these pictures in so you can see them better. I will do that. Sorry about the holding up of the phone. I don't know what I was thinking. Here's my I'm a dork face. Oh, and I can't believe I've been talking this long either. Um, but yeah, check out Perennial Roots. They're very cool. They have bees. They have interesting farming practices. Um, really cool place. And they're on Instagram. Yes, check them out on Instagram. They did this thing that was kind of mind-blowing for me that they, they cured duck egg yolks in salt from their ducks. Um, and then put them in the dehydrator. And then you can grate them like Parmesan cheese onto stuff. Savory. All right. Let me see if I can get my girl up here again. You want to come say hi? Oh man, those eyes are like hard shut. Come here, sweet love. Ooh. Ooh. I'm Alice and I'm having a nap. Oh, your foot stuck. There's my peanut. Did you miss me while I was gone? Not too much. Hope you guys have a wonderful nitty week. Until next time, see you later.